and we're back nocturnal duck here with a brand new deck just for you and your sweet head and today we have selesnia tokens this one's an interesting wall of creatures let's check it out <laughs> So what is all of this token shenanigan? Well, I pulled a bunch of Siona, Captain of the Bellis. Anyway, I can't pronounce cards, we know. Um, so I pulled all of these four copies and I have been scratching my head thinking, you know, like I haven't done an actual aura-based enchantment deck. I've done other enchantments, but not an aura one. So this is obviously built entirely around throwing auras on your creatures and we have a lot of auras in these in this current meta so i wanted to do a whole brew just around her and her shenanigans so obviously in her colors we have things that will be the citizens champion and the archon of sun's grace those two are just must include a hundred percent in a you know selesnia build especially with enchantments that's what i'm trying to say but in this particular build those three just work broken together she's going to just create an army an army of one ones every time we throw an aura on something we're going to get the card door we're going to get another token so the other way that we can get tokens this is what i wanted to try and push the most commanding presence which i would have four of if i had four copies um, this will buff your creature by a two plus two giving it first strike but also whenever it does damage to a player create a one one creature so if you throw this on something, you get a 1-1, one, one, and then a 2-2, two, two, and then when you swing in and do damage with, say, the Archon, you get another 1-1. One, one. You've already just filled the board. Our Wolfkin Bond is our other token producer. We throw this on an Archon, and we get uh, a 2-2 two, two Wolf, a 2-2 two, two Flyer, Pegasus, and a 1-1 one, one Human Soldier. So we can get three creatures for one cast, and it feels amazing. <laughs> when that's set up like that, it works bonkers. So the other auras that we have um, don't necessarily produce tokens, but they are in a way a little bit flexible. We have all that glitters because obviously we're going to have a lot of auras down and this is going to just create a huge buff for whatever we throw it on. If we throw it on the, sun, the sun's grace, it's going to be a huge flying lifelinker. So that's amazing and that's probably the most ideal target. Um, so that's a auto include. And then we have Kenrith. Kenrith's Transformation. This is pretty much here to throw down on one of our 1-1 one, one tokens or our, you know, the flyer's not the best or our wolf just to make it a bit stronger, get another trigger from all of these. But the main thing is it's another card draw and we can use it on one of their creatures as well. So if they put down a big Nightmare Shepherd, we can throw this on it. It's not a Nightmare Shepherd anymore. It's a 3-3 three, three Elk and we can definitely have a good blocker set up to be able to just handle a 3-3 three, three rather than a Four, four with the stupid ability so that's kind of a real flexible piece in the brew and it's you know uh, got a cool other ability as well which we'll get to um our bronze hide lion is a pseudo enchantment and that's the last one in the deck so this one is a two drop creature a green and a white for a three three cat and you can pay a green and a white to make him indestructible until end of turn but the trick is when he dies he comes back to the battlefield as an enchantment and you can throw it on whatever which will get another trigger and then we are going to be able to have that ability attached and just keep something around so we throw it on something like the Siona or the Archon and then that way we can just keep it keep it around making it indestructible so that's a, a nice little piece I only have two copies and I kind of feel like four copies would be a little bit over the top like if you don't have any creatures down for it to target it whiffs and taking away it, the abilities is also another sort of downfall you throw it on here he's going to lose flying you know and throw it on here you're not going to have the etbs so there's a lot of sort of you know back and forth whether this should be in the deck but i do feel like two mana for a three three is already pretty solid with a pseudo in, in indestructible but the fact that it's another sneaky little enchantment that can just get us a free trigger just by killing it so we throw this under the bus late game and then we can get another trigger of everything and then get a stronger thing whatever works good now flicker of fate is here because it's another busted piece this is going to work as our um, defense mechanism i guess so if they are going to swing in with some big creature in the air and we can't block it 
we can flicker their creature and then it will come back into the battlefield with summoning sickness they won't be able to you know have that attack go through so we can use that defensively shut down one of their big attacks but it's also for us we can use that defensively for us if they're going to banishing light one of our things we can flicker it in and out and then there's no target for their banishing light but the main thing is that it can target an enchantment so we can flicker an enchantment so not only let's let's set up the scenario if we've got a siona a citizen's champion and an archon of grace and we have a wolfkin bond on the archon of grace we can flicker the wolfkin which is going to get another trigger of everything another card draw another two two another one one when it comes back into the battlefield plus another wolf so you can see how that's really kind of bonkers <coughs> pardon me but you can also use this on banishing light so if you've used banishing light on something that's you know just early game shut them down and then late game they drop something stupid you can flicker the banishing light and take their big thing and give their little crappy thing back so that's another nice little thing and another little thing that might potentially be um, cause for mention is being able to flicker this when it's actually on a creature so if this is attached to a you know whatever creature and then we flicker it it's going to come back in as the lion so we can actually get a blocker at instant speed so it's you know pretty solid inclusion i feel flicker of fate is under overlooked a lot transcendent envoy this is just going to make all of our auras cost one less and that mainly comes into play for these uh, this becomes a four drop this becomes a three drop but other thing to mention is that all of these two drop ones become one drop so you can drop him and then still be able to cast potentially two auras straight onto something and get triggers if that's the timing of it so yeah you can sort of work in a few different ways and i, I like how this deck sort of all loops and links together all based around auras and just filling our board with creatures it's definitely a go wide board and any sweepers that just clean us up it is painful but we also can recover really quickly and it doesn't take us that long if we've got six or seven mana we can put down uh, archon and then start creating an army or a siona archon and one enchantment army you know so we can easily fill our board again compared to general sort of board board wipe decks so if they board wipe us and then put down one creature we potentially can put down four or three or whatever so we can definitely recollect after a sweep um the main thing that really you know we struggle and takes a lot of sort of well-placed banishing lights and kenrith transformations is um a bounce deck so if you're running someone who's just bouncing your things before you get triggers that's where it can actually be quite a challenge you just have to really time and navigate those games a bit differently to normal when you're versing something like red aggro with this you can just go balls out like 100 percent, just drop everything and go for it so yeah that's pretty much the deck enough chin flapping from me let's get into some games mate all right we don't have a green mulligan that yes we'll keep this um guess that one we got no scries, we'll get a pain land in now. Okay, so another green, that's not too shabby. Tap that in. Go down with our Sonia. Another grace. Gracing us with your presence. Um, well, that one's not too bad. Have a little dig. Okay, so it looks like we're going to keep her. So that's pretty nice. Drop that. We'll put this on here. And then this on here. Go 
Okay. Attack. So we could have held off for our grace to do that, but I kind of wanted to see her in action. All right. No blocks. Okay. Attack. That's not very fun, is it? We've got eight damage next turn. No blocks. We could have a counter spell here. Ooh, loady. If only we had another mana. Okay, so no counter spell. Get in a chunky amount of damage. Go back up to 17. That's pretty much it, isn't it? <laughs> yep. Okay, so we don't have any green. I don't really want to keep it without green. So, turn three, we really need to buy. Okay, that's better. Don't have any auras for her, but she'll dig one up and throw back a banishing light. I just feel like if you're waiting for green and you've got a bunch of green cards, there's no use holding it. So, alright. Banishing light. Get our tapped in. So, we've got a turn two, turn three. So that's pretty decent. Hopefully, we draw into some auras she will dig one up for sure but I wanted to draw into one before oh there's one okay so down with our envoy envoy all right what's gonna happen here Okay, so we could get rid of his ramp or hold off for what he ramps in and just take that. I think that's a better one. Okay. I guess that's good. Let me get one in. So now we can cast this next turn, which is going to give us a wolf and a 1-1 one, one. or we could cast this and banishing light so we're kind of pretty well set up here okay so that's not a bad idea to get rid of but currently he doesn't really pose a threat and he's only got one red mana so it's like he can't grow him as fast as he would normally be able to he taps for green, so... Okay, so there's our Pegasus. He's... He's a worthy candidate to go down right now. To be able to double over on that. I think while we're safe... We'll go in. He's obviously going to block the... With the Druid. Yeah. Just send a message. Send a message. It's time. It's time to get this party started. Alright, so there's his little buff. And 
we can pretty cleanly get rid of her with one of these. So no land, that kind of sucks. We can easily just get rid of Chandra now. There we go, here's a bunch of chickens. Go on to her. Okay. Up to 25. How's that? Three tokens, one card. I love it. I feel like he's looking at that thinking, where did they all come from? How did you get that many? Alright, this does not look good. This does not look good. But we can just get rid of her. So he's definitely getting rid of the... Yeah, the captain. Captain! Oh, captain. Oh! Interesting. How interesting. Of course I'm going to exchange tokens for a runaway steamkin. Maybe you shouldn't have attacked. I'm just going to cleanly banishing light this Chandra. And then all the glitters onto the Archon. What are you doing here, buddy? Okay, so we'll paint that in. Get ourselves another little Pegasus. And then, fill our board again. Big attack here. And we go up to 33. It's just a constant stream of creatures. Generally a couple at a time. I think I need more of those wolf. I think I've got three in the deck. I need to up the ante and make that four. Because that thing is really doing lots of work. If I had another one come down next turn, I mean we've already won. Combat damage. So yeah, there's another. Commanding presence is another good one. Okay, so another mulligan. To just to get the green land. I don't know what's going on here. Go back with that. Again, no scries. It's very interesting. I've had to mulligan to get green every time. Oh, into that tapped. Welcome, Your Grace. And this guy is just bursted. Alright, so he's going on a mill. A little mill deal here, I see. I'm gonna keep that scry because I want to get something down. So next turn we can get rid of that. Okay. So I'm gonna punish him for that. Most certainly I'm going to punish him for that. Snap! I'm going to take that. Thanks, buddy. Thanks for coming. You took two whole turns to be able to just mill me, so I'm going to take one turn to stop your whole train. Hopefully he doesn't have another one, or a bounce for that. Okay, so he has other means... Other means of bounce. So I'm gonna scry here. 
Nice, except he's going to mill that. So I'm going to hold off here. I don't want that to go to the bin just yet. Hopefully have all of his bounce out of his hand. So if he puts another thing down, drown secrets, we're gonna take it. If he puts down something substantial on the board, like a creature, we're gonna take it. But I really wanna shut down his plan. I wanna save this until he puts down something like commits to something. I don't want to just use it on some little petty creature. I want to sort of really punish him. Punish him. So next turn we can go two casts and get a bunch of uh, tokens. And I think that's where we're going to take over a little bit by just having more. If we can keep this guy. Okay. There goes a couple of our pieces. But if we can keep him around, if we can untap with him. Okay, looks like we're going to. Beautiful. All right. I don't necessarily want another one just yet. So we'll get one here. And another one here. And I think this is where we should should really take over a bit here. Okay, so we're gonna do 11 damage and go up 11 and end turn. And now we've got a solid board. So even if he gets rid of that Archon, we've still got... Yeah, there it is. So it's just a little careful you know, manoeuvring with these banishing lights and tribunals to sort of shut him down enough to be able to pose that much of a threat. That was good. Okay, I'm going to keep this. I think we should dig into our third land by turn three. We've got a couple of turn two answers if we need. Both of these cards can be quite flexible as tempo or sort of removal-esque. Okay, so that's no real threat. There's our third land. And turn. Okay. Sure. Just gonna get his attacker in. One, no worries. Okay, so we get down our champion and have a little dig. Okay, so we'll go for that because we've got two of the transformations. And we've got another one in case he just has straight up shock removal. So he does not. Um. So I missed our land. So I'm just going to take away his whole turn there. I think that's a better... Chill, more chilled move. Okay. So we've done that at the right time, thank God. So we're just playing around him at the moment. So he chose not to, he might have another one. So he shut down that part of the plan. So now he's going for a big dig. So at this point, I think we can go... Oh, we're still missing a land here. 
bring him down. And that's going to shut down his thing, but at least we'll get the ball rolling. No. And we could dig in for another land as well. Um, yeah, I'm just going to pass. Play a little bit more conservative. I don't want to just commit to the board for the sake of it. It looks like he might have an enchantment removal here. Okay, so he's got a, a big flyer. So that's pretty nice. So no blocks. We'll take we'll take the fall because we can get a bit of life back. There's our land. Okay, so we can go down with one of these and get some things going. And I think. I think what we could do... Hmm, this really sucks. I'll just get a card draw here. So there's another land. Okay, so it's not exactly what we needed. And then I guess we go down on here and get a, a token as well. Another card draw. So another land, not what we needed. We'll end there. So at least we kind of matched what he has. So he has another one. Of course he's got another one. Okay, so pass to attackers. Um, I don't necessarily want to take that, but we will. Okay. So, a banishing light here. I want to take him. I'll put this down. And I'm going to do a flicker on this. And attach it to this. Nice. Okay, so we will chill now. So he's getting more land. We're still open for another one of those big uh, hasty dragon attacks. Okay, so that's not too bad. Hopefully we get another flicker. We do not. But, we do get to this. <laughs> and then this is going to kill him off. Ah, oh, he's got the... I always forget that he's got reach. Okay, so we've got got perfect jump blockers for this. Yes. That's fine. Okay. I'll destroy one of these guys under the burst. I'll do get rid of both of them. So there's another land. So we'll double over again. Next to attackers, we're going to go five under him. We've got awesome amount of jump blockers so we finally get rid of his reach and turn so if I don't get another aura I will double over on that yeah, so this is fine because we've got the perfect jump blockers jump blockers all day
Okay. So I probably would have attacked with more than that, but whatever. We'll actually go like this. We're just gonna exchange our two one ones. And he does one damage to what? Me? Yep. Alright, so that's pretty good. Enter that tapped. Yes. Yes. Okay. And then we make another one. So he could have removal for this. No. He's about to die if he can't get rid of that envoy. Yeah. So we'll swap there, swap there, there, and there. And there, why not? Cool. So we'll go down with this first. Man, that's definitely the game then. Okay. Just swing in there. Rock solid. Rock solid.